Welcome back to the shop, guys. I hope everybody's staying safe here. Uh, I also hope everybody's having as much fun as I am with this CNC. I'm having a blast. So, um, first, I'm just going to give a quick little update on where I am with the machine, progress that I'm doing. Um, then, as promised, I'm going to show you how I made the X axis drive and the Y axis drive. Remember, um, I'm just recording this live as I'm building it, as I'm figuring it out. So, see you next week. Just a little quick update on where I am with this guy. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I'm having some fun here, let me tell you. Um, X axis. Um, uh, I can say, you know, these motors are really strong because I, in figuring out Mach 3, it's accidentally taken off, hit a hard stop enough that it broke the nut free from the lead screw down here. So I had to take the whole X axis apart, reline everything up, and get the nut tight again. And now it's pretty much so under control. So I took uh, on the drivers, I took the current all the way up. So I highly advise if you're going to do this, keep the current down and you don't need stronger motors than this. No way. So, okay. So the nut was loose. Everything's straight now and um, got it together. Um, y axis turns out, I didn't realize it, but this part actually <laughs> exceeds the base. So I had to make some little spacers in here. I've got 300 thousandths to back the whole thing out. And so now I can have the end mill clear the back of the vise. Perfect. So greased everything too. A lot of the problems, the noise and stuff you heard in the past video was because I didn't have grease on the lead screws. So it was binding and having some problems with that. Um, Z's pretty good. Oh yeah, on all of these axes, I'll tell you the strength of the motors, they were slipping because I never had flats. So I took the coupling off the X that goes to the lead screw, which goes into the flex coupling, put a flat on that, and then put it back in the coupling. So that doesn't slip anymore. Same way with Z, I had to take him apart, and the pinion came out, put a flat on the hat, put it all back together. So that's done. We've got an e-stop. I still don't have my switch from Banggood, so I had to make something, I figured. Um, been able to do a lot of stuff. I've got it all calibrated with Mach 3. I've got backslash, backlash in there. You know, finally have it running inches because I couldn't handle millimeters. So that's good. I'm starting to do my own coding. It's pretty fast and easy. So I've got routines for doing a notch. I did a quick little end mill notch where it goes to the right, goes back, goes to the left, comes forward, so it's always climb milling. This, you know, I can just enter in the variables and I can have a slot or notch, whatever you want to call it. Um, any size I want, any depth that I want. I've also gone and put a groove in the top of this, not very much, but, and I can drill with it. So this is really good. The one thing I also have is broaching. Um, as I figure, you know, it's it's a pain to do broaching by hand. So I'm got um, a piece of high speed steel in a tool grinder right now. I'm starting to make a little broaching tool where it's just going to poke out and then do it. So I can do different widths and things like that. So I'm hoping to get that running and going. So that's just kind of where I am. Mach three kind of figured out a lot of the bugs that are in it corks because i've had it all of a sudden lose all the settings so so i have written them all down here i'm starting to do a master sheet of all the settings motor tuning settings and outputs the pins for e-stop all that sort of stuff backlash settings so that's just kind of a quick update having a good time with it cleaned it all up too since the um, x-axis is fairly easy to do, sort of, since I've already done it once doing the power feed for the first mill, first decision was what motor. 
This is a NEMA 23. Uh, I know it's going to be way overkill. When I first got the 3018, I was just playing with the motors on the bench. Those are NEMA 17s. Tremendous amount of force. So, and really easy to turn by hand. So, if you wanted to do a power feed, you would, wouldn't have to disengage it if you use the 17 because you can barely feel it. Uh, but yet, you cannot stall it with your fingers. So, I probably could have gone with the 17. A few bucks more. I think this was $22 off of Amazon. And it is a heavy motor. 6.35 millimeter shaft, so it's a quarter inch shaft. So, okay, I got the motor and they had all the dimensions and stuff for it. So, the first one I had a hard time trying to figure out where that lead screw was and holes and heights and stuff. So before um, messing around and screwing up another piece of material, 3D print my prototype. Uh, print is here if anybody wants. And yeah, it was off. I did quite a few dimension changes and I'm printing another one right now that's uh, 100 thousandths thick. You know, I, this was just to make sure things line up. And I'm pretty sure I have this right and I'm about to find out. I can always oversize these holes here so it shifts around um, to line up good but um, so still playing with that so I got my prototype and I'll have another thicker one where I can actually bolt it all together uh, of course the motor mount stuff is all correct because I had the print because um, what I'm afraid too is this lead screw if it's at an angle or tilted or something or wobbles, I don't know. But this motor will take care of anything that happens. So I've got that done. Um, I did buy a piece of advice. Here's the return slip. Guy just picked it up. Do not buy the flex couplings off of Amazon where you see red in it. it looks like it's plastic or rubber they do not flex i bought three of them for fifteen dollars they just went back i couldn't flex them to save my life these yeah you can flex them with your fingers this should be pretty good quarter inch 6.35 millimeters eight millimeter um this is this is this is the actual yeah this is the actual one wow um I did make the coupling I'll get into, but when this goes on the coupling on the lead screw, these hit the bottom of the table. This just clears. They didn't have these dimensions on Amazon. So it was a shock when they came in. I'm going, whoa, that's big, and I could always turn it down. But now that, so I found some Phillips head guys. Now it clears and just turns in there. So, okay, I got the motor, I've got this, I got my plate, a lot of it done. Um, this was the print for this. Just trying to figure this out. Didn't have to prototype it, because you can measure it, and it just, it's right there. So, uh, and it fits perfectly on the spindle. I got it correct, 472 thousandths. Use gauge pins as I was boring it out. No wobble. So, um... I'll need to put a set screw in it. Might put a flat on here for this guy. Yeah, there's the 8 millimeter. So everything's working good so far. Um, just got to wait for the next prototype 3D print to complete here. And I can bolt it all together and see what happens. The other interesting thing is the lead screw nut can be high or low throwing this end off. It can also be tilted, throwing it off center. Um, I put this hole dead center between the two mounting holes. So, again, once I get it all bolted together, I'll know, and then I'll start cutting some material up. Well, there's one motor down. Update the print for all the changes, but you got to get some 5 millimeter. Um, screws that are short because it's going to hit this bit and I only had a couple of them to mount the motor but 
uh, it lines up. I mean, nicely. There's a little bit of drag on the, no, there's not much on the lead screw. And this coupling, I haven't put the set screw in it. You can actually slide it back and forth. So I'm very, very pleased with how this came out here. Sometimes if I go all the way, you know, even if it binds, I don't care because this motor is going to move it one way or another. So no big deal at all. I don't see anything wobbling, moving. This is great. Um, so now what? Okay, on to the Y-axis, which is going to be quite a bit more complicated, I think. So let's see what happens. Update on some of the progress here. Bring this more into the camera view. Um, did think, 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 and draw plans. Kind of not complete <laughs> side view or whatever, but I think you know you got to do the plans because uh, all of a sudden and to scale because all of a sudden you'll find out something's wrong or something's not going to work. Um, so yeah, chunk of aluminum, just basically square it all up in the vise, take it down, take this side down, um, start it, well, I drilled all the way through, I was in, yeah, this was on the mill, drilled that through, bored it so it exactly fits this guy, and it's a beautiful fit, so I got that right with gauge pins, and then... I flipped it over and end mill went down so I could get this bottom shelf here. I was probably 30 thousandths before final depth because my boring was going to take care of the rest. Started boring it and when you get around three quarter inch for some reason the mill does not like boring things bigger than that. Squealing, chatter, everything. I think it's because the head was so far off balance, it was all over the place. So I put this in the forge on the lathe and finished boring it out. So that's two days to bore it to an inch and a half. It's actually a little bit bigger than that. 1.520. Motor fits it uh, beautifully, holes all line up. So nice, happy with that now. <laughs> Next thing is always flying by the seat of your pants. These guys, yeah. I drew the holes in here, but they're kind of off center. So I'm just trying to figure out what I'm going to do with this. And so far, the thought is uh, drill it out to, you know, the trick that I learned before don't use an end mill to um, create this countersink. You want to use a drill bit. That way the screw always winds up on center because the drill bit leaves it kind of funneled or like that. So um, I was thinking about, um, since the drill bit's not going to be off, just drill all the way through. So I got to drill. And then I was thinking about using this guy uh, to just countersink. I'm going to have to probably take this to the tool grinder to bring this down to the right dimension it's because this is over six millimeters and the drill bits under six millimeters and I want this to guide it because it's going to break out on the side and I want the hole to keep it straight going down I was thinking about using an end mill but it's not going to these do such a nice job clean cuts clean side wall and everything so I was thinking about just taking this and going down. Uh, that's just the thought so far. And then to be able to tighten up all this stuff, he goes down in there nicely. There's enough of a gap that I'll have a gap uh, down here and then I'll have a gap on the motor. Ooh, actually the motor sticks in further. Uh, there still is quite a bit. How much have I got? Oh yeah, there's a lot, so no big. Now how to tighten up all the screws and allens on this thing, set screws. Um, I was originally thinking, um, because this is threaded here for the chip guard, I was going to keep this higher. I was going to just like cut the groove through here. Uh, but I'm realizing I can't do that because of this piece here. 
unless they take this whole thing down. Whoa, that would be wild. Okay, I've got some thinking to do. There's a chip guard, I can just leave the top. Like, well, I'm way down here, but. All right, got thinking to do. I just didn't even realize, you know, just take a whole piece out. That'll open this up, because originally I was thinking I'm just gonna cut a channel here and a channel on the bottom or something like that or maybe even the sides and then I can easily get in there to tighten things up or I can just drill holes to line up with these things so not sure where I'm gonna go now um, so uh, pretty good so far everything lines up beautifully you know that shaft goes in there probably gonna have to put a washer or something is that a rough edge Ugh. It's grease or something on it, right? I hope. Yeah, I'm gonna have to clean that up. Oh, that's a terrible. It's pointed, weird. And it's rough too. So I will be turning that down when I cut this off and then turn this down to fit this eight millimeter guy here. So onward and upward, let's see what I'm gonna come up with next. Well, this is where I am so far. Days of machining and billions worth of chips and pretty close to being done with it. Uh, as you can see, I decided to go in on the sides to still got to clean this finish up. Um, but problem, I knew it was going to be a problem, so I can't get the bolt in yet. So this is still too long. So once I get the right size, I got to go to Marshalls and go through all the different ones. When I get it close enough, then I'll take this down more. I can still go quite a bit more down. There's the holes here. So it doesn't go in too far. I got a lot of room to go. Um, everything fits nicely on it too. So you can get to the burk. You can easily get to the screws and stuff to tighten up this back half of the motor, spin it around. Yeah, it's on top. So, there. Nice. Took this down further than I had in the print. Just looks better. I wish the forge jaw hadn't have made marks in this thing. They're pretty deep. May wind up just fly cutting it to get rid of them, but whatever. So, um... All I need to do is get the right screws and then cut this guy. Kind of made a mark on it because you can, that's what I said, this guy, I have used him so much it's ridiculous. Because I can actually just put this on here and then I run this guy down in there and find the actual, it's set to the depth right now. So everything's nice and straight on center, it's beautiful. So, and so if I'm kind of, flip it over here a little bit. So if I cut it right there, I'm actually going to cut it over here. So I can face it off and then turn this down to fit this guy. And then that'll be that part. So I'll have, I have X done. That'll be Y. And I might actually just try to run this motor on the Gerbil controller from the 3018. I've got a spare one. So, and that should run it. You know, it's not going to be full power, but it should go. Because I'm only buying a piece at a time. Because if I get stuck, I don't want to have invested a lot of money in this project. <laughs> only to find out I can't do it, but I should be able to do it. So Z will be up next. I've got to finish this and get it bolted on. I've already got X all bolted on and ready. It goes. So bring it back, I guess, when I do this thing. This junk out of the way here. It's scary cutting it off, but it's done. So I decided to put a washer on it. Found one that fit perfectly. This stuff is pretty soft. This is like 1018. It's not as bad as 12L, but which is supposed to be machinable. I um, would have thought they'd make it harder than that. But I already messed with it. It's like nice. 
I just need to get the bolts for the motor and that. But it goes right in there and if I can hold it all together, tighten it down. There, it's tight. And you probably can see the coupling flexing in there. It's nice, very nice. So grease it up, get all the bolts, and then all I have to do is unscrew the other one, screw this guy in there and bolt it in place. Be nice, it runs around everything. Well, it really is flexible. So I don't know how much it can do that. I know it can bend, but it probably can do that. So pretty happy with this guy. Just get the bolts and then finish trimming it down and cleaning it up. Just doing a test of it. It doesn't get better than this. Crazy. Um, first, yeah, I realized I don't need uh, socket heads. So I just cut some bolts off, the heads off some bolts, run them in there, and use a nut and washer. And I guess I'll use this guy to set the depth so it's flush on the top of the nut. And looks like I need to open this up more because you can't see the Allen wrench on this side, but it just makes it. And it'd be nicer to have it more open. But it, this thing's just sitting here because I don't have the screws for the motor yet. But it lines right up. It just doesn't get better than this. Perfect in there. Jeez. Um. So I need to update the print. Yeah, that's another point. Is I guess I didn't realize it, but the you saw on the lead screw the flat edge, the bigger piece or whatever that hits the back of this thing when the handles on here the screw pulls it this way so I'm gonna have a spring action here somehow that's why I want to open it up more because I could I should be able to spread this slightly before tightening it down that way it's pulling on it but and it should be okay I don't think this there's too much of a spring here trying to pull on it oh that's pretty tough with the fingers to just try to pull this uh, coupling further out um, the other thing I messed up on is they turned the shaft down too far it was supposed to fit in that hole so it's free floating in there right now which might actually be better because I'm looking in here right now and it's just slightly that way uh, it moves around because there's slop in the nut back there and the only way to move the nut is I'd have to take the whole x-axis off, which I'm not going to do on this machine. So it's lining up, and it seems like it's just fine. Um, so I'll take it apart. Oh, and I got to drill and tap for the, uh, the that little metal bar that goes across for the uh, chip protector or whatever, the leather piece. And it's nice because the holes are close together so I can drill it here or out here or even way back there. So like I said, this doesn't get any better than this. And this was perfect. It just went on there. So I got the dimensions of where these holes are supposed to be for this right on the money to within a few thou. Um, I don't have the nut on this side, but... So yeah, take it apart, drill tap two holes in the top and get these studs the right length um, and open this up more and then clean up the finishes and I'll be done with the y-axis and then on to the z wow 